Okay, for today I've got what I think is a fun example. Something we kind of know about already, but maybe don't understand the physics that, that uh, are behind it. And what I've got is a can that I've uh, emptied, drank the Coke in it, and I twisted it. Now when you twist, if you do everything just right, and I got pretty close, you'll see that uh, when, when cylinders fail in torsion, you'll see 45 degree crinkles in them. Right? Now I just grabbed this with my hand and twisted, so I got like, again close. If you look at how drive shafts fail in torsion or how other cylinders fail in torsion, thin walled cylinders, you'll find out that there are almost always crinkles at 45 degrees. There, there's uh, buckling at 45 degrees, either plus or minus, up to the major axis of the shaft. So what I've got here is an example based on a soft drink can. Now this is the kind of soft drink cans sold in the United States, and I've taken dimensions in metric units. My soft drink can was 65 millimeters in diameter, and I'm guessing at the, the wall thickness. I think the wall thickness is about a quarter of a millimeter. The walls are very, very thin, so this is close. And I'm guessing at the torque I applied to crinkle my can, and I'm guessing it's 10 newton meters. So what we're going to do is figure out the stresses on a stress element that I've drawn on the can there, and then we're going to draw more circle and see what that tells us. So, let's draw the uh, stress element larger. There's sigma x, sigma y, there, and Okay, that's tau xy and tau yx on that face. Now remember how the, the notation here, tau xy and tau yx are equal and opposite, they have opposite signs, and that xy subscript, that means it stresses on the x face and in the y direction. These are stresses in the y face and on the x direction, so that's pretty straightforward. Now, when I went to crinkle my can, I tried very hard not to pull or push on it. So, if I do this right, if I did this right, that should be zero. Now, the can's empty. There's no pressure inside of it, and I'm trying not to grab the can and squeeze it. So, sigma x must be zero, too. The only stress I've got left on my can is shear stress. So, let's figure that out. Okay, the expression for shear stress is TR over J. This is probably in your book or your notes, whatever you're using. And that's the same as TD over 2J. We use diameter more than radius most of the time, so that makes sense. My diameter is 65 millimeters. Uh, torque, I know, 2 is just a number. So J is the number I need right now. Well, J is pi over 32, outer diameter to the fourth minus inner diameter to the fourth. Big D is outer diameter, little d is inner diameter. So, pi over 32 is 0.065 meters. Actually, let's do this in millimeters. 65 millimeters to the fourth minus. Now, the inside diameter is going to be the outside diameter minus twice the wall thickness. Not one wall thickness, but two wall thicknesses. So I'm going to get 64.5 millimeters, also to the fourth. And if you work that out, you get 53303, I believe, millimeters to the fourth. So that's J, the number we're going to need here in a second. I'm going to write that over here. Okay, so we're almost there. I'm going to erase this real quick because I'm run out of space and let's see, let's get rid of that and uh, plug all these numbers back in so I have 10 Newton meters times 0 0.065 meters I'll, I'll have to do this all in, in some consistent units so I'm going to work in meters here and J is 5.3303 times 10 to the minus 4 fourth, I believe. Let me check that. Oh, sorry, 10 to the minus 8. There. I thought that was too small. There we go. There we go. And we, we 
work through all those numbers, we get 6.097 megapascals. Okay. So I know All right, got the stresses on our stress element now. We know that's zero, sigma x is zero, sigma y is zero. Tau xy we know to be about 6.1 megapascals. So, time to draw more circle. circle is drawn on stress axes, not geometric axes. S uh, normal stress goes along this axis, and shear stress goes along that axis. And we are going to plot two points on these axes. The first one is sigma x tau xy. That's going to form a point in this direction and a point in that direction. The other point we're going to uh, plot is sigma y tau yx. You have two points. From those, we are going to find the radius of a circle and the center of a circle. Well, once you know where the center of a circle is and what its radius is, you know everything there is to know about a circle and you can draw it. So let's do that. Point number one is sigma x equals zero, tau xy equals 6.1. So on the x face, I have zero, 6.097. That's sigma and tau. That's the point I'm going to plot here. So zero, and I'll just call that arbitrarily 6.097. And that's the data from the x face. Data from the y face of my stress element. I'm also going to have zero for sigma y and minus 6.097. Okay. Sigma y is zero. Tau yx is the negative of tau xy. So I'm going to go down this same amount. I'm doing everything in megapascals here. Okay, so there's one point of the circle. There's the other point of a circle. Now this is an especially easy circle to draw because I already know this, the center has to go through that point. These are uh, opposite points on a circle. The line connecting that point and that point must go through the center of the circle. And I know from how Mohr's circle works, the center of the circle must lie on this horizontal axis. So let's go ahead and sketch out part of the circle here. That's sort of circular. And there's something interesting here. That, that number right there is 2 phi, where phi is the, the angle I would have to rotate Mohr's circle through so that the x face was pointed in the direction of maximum normal stress. Well, 2 phi equals 90 degrees. So phi equals 45 degrees. And there you have it. The direction of maximum normal stress is for, what happens when I rotate this, 45 degrees. 45 degree kink is in the can. Okay. 